Welcome to The Lumber Word, where industry veterans Matt Beamer, Greg Riley, and Ashley Buckold dissect the world of commodity lumber each week. We bring you up-to-date insights on supply, demand, and market trends, sharing our trading expertise to benefit everyone in the supply chain. Join us for informative and entertaining discussions that guarantee to make you wiser about all things lumber. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first podcast for 2024 of the world-renowned The Lumber Word with Greg Riley and Matt Beamer. Great to get back into the mix of things. We've got a lot to talk about. How was, uh, how was everybody's break? Pretty fun. Yeah, Matt, you did the uh, golf thing last week, eh? Yeah, I went to Bandon Dunes for three days, and it just showed me how fat and out of shape I am. You know, it's it's kind of like Pebble Beach. You're just right there on the ocean. It's it's link style golf. It's pretty cool, dude. I enjoyed it. I've heard about. I think Greg. Uh, I think Greg has been there before. Greg, have you been to the dunes? Uh, you know, I yeah, I have. It's too long. Um, I need to get back out there. I think there was only two. Maybe maybe they were building old McDonald's. So. I, it's like we're I'm, I'm I'm ready to get back out there. Can we say where you're doing the podcast from today, Greg? Uh it's an undisclosed location, Ashley. I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm in the I'm in the Pacific office right now. Very nice. Very nice. Which you probably one of to... the islands. <laughs> <laughs> I had a te- I had a text this morning at about like 2 45 a.m. that said, Hey, can we can we can we talk? Uh, I said, sure. So anyhow, are you yeah, feeling no, better, good. dude? I heard you were sick. Uh, last yeah, week yeah I during Christmas. We had, we had a, we had a really nice Christmas. And then, uh, I went out to California, visited some of my kids and, uh, they had something that, you know, people said, Oh, did you get COVID? I go, no, I wish I had COVID cause it would have been so much better. <laughs> I'm a, I'm two week I'm two weeks into it, and as you can hear, I'm still uh, I'm I'm still I'm I'm still coughing some stuff up, but it's all good. It's all good. Good, I'm good, good deal. I'm hey, Matt, I kind of back to what you were saying about finding out being in shape or out of shape. I went in and got on that machine that weighs you and does your body fat analysis. Yeah. And uh, guys, like you're up 14 pounds from uh, two months ago. My God, how could how could that be? Like. Uh, I'm doing everything right. And then I thought about all the bags of those. Uh, I've discovered those bags of popcorn, Greg, that have the cheese and caramel corn mixed together. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> and my wife is like, my wife is like you it. ate yeah. a bag of those every night for the last month. Back to the grind now. But, uh, hey, Joe, I wanted to go over, let's talk a little bit about lumber here. Glad you're both back. Good to have you back. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Um, too. Yeah, lumber is continues to to plot along i mean just as we just talked had a call with the guy today and uh like you know we did we were really we had a lot of business up through the holidays you know this week a little bit different in the regions that we trade in but it's been a good opportunity to make sure everything's shipping with all the business that we've taken over the last month right i mean we've got some winter weather coming across the united states and but but let's let's just say this the last quarter of the year pretty good we got more orders than we thought we were going to get every week matt i think you mentioned the same thing we're going into the first part of the year we'll unpack some of that but i wanted to say one thing this guy asked me is hey how's your first six months back in the wholesale distribution business i'm like you know i'm having a great time and to me business is really good but i'm talking to people that don't think business feels as good and and uh i think if you compared it to 2020 and 21 and 22 it it maybe it's not as good but i gotta tell you if i go back and look at the years up and through 2019 it feels pretty good any any thoughts there i'll just look at there i'll give you a stat and it's not a i'm not going to reveal all the the data but I was looking at my yearly results. So I compared the end of uh, 2023 numbers to the end of 2022 numbers. And I was a little surprised. Now the dollars are down because the price of lumber is down. Yeah. But the volume of lumber that I went through last year in terms of putting stuff on the ground, like anything that I put in inventory was up. 
which surprised me. I would have thought that I actually did more volume through inventory in 2022 than I did in 2023, just because 2022 was such a mad scramble year, but I actually did more inventory flow last year than the year before, which again, it kind of surprised me a little bit. So I'm kind of curious if that's going to, that that trend will continue this year. And it's not just Texas. I mean, I put wood on the ground in, 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 um, Oregon here as origin reloads and, um, you know, I put wood on the ground in a couple other places too, but I was surprised. That's an interesting stat, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Ash, I, you know, I guess I'll just say it's been, uh, you know, six, six months in it's, it's awesome having you on, uh, on the team. You know, my, my, my game plan was, I thought, you know, you'd come on and, you know, I'd be able to ease down and all you're doing is making me work way harder, way more. And I'd love every minute of it. So you like those 4am, yeah. you like those 4am like calls, me complaining. <laughs> no, you uh, you never complain about anything. You just always questioning. Well, I'm but like, you oh, always God, he's being such a little bitch again. <laughs> you always break out. Yeah, <laughs> guilty, guilty. You always break out the number one on the uh, the number one on the yeah. um, number one on uh, investors' one business daily. Success. Positive mental, at positive. Come in every day with a positive attitude, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and, and what, what I'm working on with you is uh, focusing your time and money. And yeah. you're, you're like, I will say is, uh, you've definitely come along a long way in a short amount of time. And, just bad. It's, it's awesome. I appreciate it. And the same here, Greg, and back to what Matt just said, how do those stats like play out from what, what we, we look at, you think 2022 versus 2023 volumetrically versus it makes sense now that I'm sitting here noodling over that in my head. Um, I, I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to look at the actual yeah. numbers. I mean, to, to Matt, to Matt's point. You know, 2023 sales dollars were down because of average price. I can tell you that um, profits were way down due to the the lower the lower volatility. Yeah. Second half of the year. I mean, although you and I we had a good we had a good third quarter, but fourth qu fourth quarter was uh was a bit was a bit of a wash. Just kind of getting back to you know where we are. As you were talking, Ash, yeah, you know, you and I are incredibly busy day in and day out. We got a lot of volume, you know, and I think that's a, a lot to do with the function that we're in the distribution business and truckload business is 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 high is high demand. I think December and particularly running through the end of the year and the holidays, you know, the the, the prices moved up. And if you look at spruce, which is what we trade in, uh, in the spruce numbers right now um are you know probably the highest that the price has been in you know six six eight nine months so i, I think a lot of people kind of got ahead of some first quarter buying december and through the holidays and and we're moving into kind of a period of consolidation slash potentially some uh some adjustment seasonally if we go back and we look at the true seasonals over time January, February, March, we usually make a high of the year. Is that correct? First or second uh, quarter, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to we we get, we're going to make a high somewhere between mid-February and the 1st of April. So we're the the, the odds are that prices are going to be higher as we move towards spring building season. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have to I have to agree there. And I think we're right now as we're recording this, January is going into expiration. You and I just had the conversation before we got on this call. You know, we had a convert we had convergence last week, so to speak. Does that Yeah, I mean January right now, if if we just go look at, you know, like print is, you know, maybe a twenty dollar discount to print. So it's you know, it's it's expiring, quote unquote, you know, a little weaker. Yeah, and you had a good point too. You're you if I heard you right, and I was talking to him about two by fours in the West, Matt. Probably the Western Canadian spruce producers, as we're talking about this today, probably don't have a lot of downside here. Is that kind of what we talked about a little bit, Greg? Does it make sense? My wife, if she if my wife hears that with me saying, Does it make sense? She's gonna say I just made myself sound stupid saying that. But it's just one your nervous you should, you should eliminate that phrase from your <laughs> vocabulary thank you mindy <laughs> matt what are your thoughts on that <laughs> <laughs>
Yep. You think what that, are your thoughts on think that, Matt? that the price of two before butter in the West is sticky? Is that what you're saying? You think it's going to be sticky? I think that it, I think that in the you know the the low four hundreds that Western Western mills are going to be like loath to like offer that market down. I mean, unless by by all the calculations that we know, you know, they're still they're still losing money at today's prices. I think I think that the price of Western spruce and and hemp fur is probably run out of momentum right now on the upside. And that you'll see Agreed. some some a, l- a little bit of ground given here over the next uh, couple weeks. Not a lot, because I think that the market actually wants to and needs to continue buying to before. It's the number one hot item that w- people keep calling about. It doesn't matter if it's green or dry or what grade it is. Two before is where it's at again. Um, and then anything with a good tally, like heavy 16, 18, 20 is, is worth a lot more money. So if the mills can figure out how to manufacture what people want to buy, they're going to be able to hold on to, to most of their price gains over the next uh, few months, I think, you know, and then we'll just, we'll probably just end up being range bound be- between that, you know, 400 mil. I think we predicted to maybe we'd get up to like, 530 mil at the high for the year was our end of the year prediction last year. So if I use that 530 as the high end, I can see a scenario for 2024 where we we have a couple of hundred to 130 dollar rallies. And uh at least in the first half of the year, I don't have a clue what's gonna I don't have a strong opinion about what's gonna happen the second half of the year. I, there's too much moving parts and too much macro headwinds and and following breezes. There's a lot of weird information that's contradictory going on right now in the United States. And then we have an election year too, on top of all that. But I feel pretty confident about the first half of the year that, that what, what, what'll happen is what I just, just alluded to that, that we've, the bottom's in, put it that way. Well, I mean, if we look at, if we look at the demand side, you know, all I have to do is look at, you know, the numbers about from, from on their, on their home sales and their backlog and if you look at builder stocks up at you know all-time highs or you look at b or you look at bfs it's those are all things that are saying that hey listen home building home building is pretty good we talked about this before it's single family is going to be just fine the real question is what's what's multifamily going to be right and so you know, and I think we're, I'm kind of seeing that today and that, you know, there's a little, I got a little bit of weakness in uh two by four, nine foot. And I think that's a function just of that. That's there's not that much multifamily on a relative basis. You know, we were talking as it could be down as much as 20%, 23 to 24. So let me ask both of you guys this. Do you think there's some multifamily business that was taken when margins kind of were compressed and late in the fourth quarter? that hasn't been covered yet or is there, I mean, cause Greg, I mean, we, we hear about jobs all the time where people want people to lunge at them right now and the prices don't make sense. Or are you saying there's just probably not going to be as much volume of, of that out there? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think that, you know, multifamily on a year over year basis is going to be lower in 2024 20, than it was in 23, uh, you know, across the board, you know, it's kind of a constant process of there's, there's people that there's there's business that's out there that's uncovered. There's business. I I think there's probably more business that's uncovered from the general contractor uh, level than there is necessarily that you know the secondaries have business that they're that they're uncovered on. Yeah, there you go. But, but, but that's you know that's such a generalization. Yeah, and it's regional too, because Greg, we're getting actually a little bit more bidding activity in the West uh, the okay. last month, month and a half, to the point where if somebody comes to us right now and says, "Hey, we want you to indemnify our our job that we have starting in May on you know two million feet of green dug fir two before through two twelve, what do you think over print you would need to be?" And you know, maybe it would have been fifty or a hundred dollars at one point. We're going to be like, yeah, one hundred fifty. We just have enough business already on the books, and we don't know what this year is going to end up being like. There's been an increase in demand for West Coast species, and it's not a, it's not something that is coming from the East Coast or from the Midwest. It's all from the West. So it's its natural environment. Our lumber is going where it's supposed to go. 
we don't have to dump it into Texas or or Missouri or Alabama. Or we don't have to ship it to Atlanta to get orders on studs. You know, we're staying here with our lumber. And when that happens, it gives Hampton a lot more pricing power and it makes the people that run the show here feel a little bit more nervous about getting trapped on the upside if you take a bunch of short orders for, you know, three, four, five, six months down the road. So, you know, there's some pretty smart people running this company. I'm not going to disagree with them on that kind of stuff. So we're, our risk management strategy right now has changed a little bit over the last four months. It was, hey, take the orders that are decent or better for the future. And now we're like, we don't want those orders. We, we don't. We just want the good ones, the safe ones, because we've got all the decent to good orders we could possibly cover at this moment. We don't want more of them. All it's going to take is a few mill shutdowns, um, you know, some logging issues. We have terrible weather. It's going to snow in my house uh, tomorrow or Saturday. We got like real winter coming right now. I had power outage uh, the other night. Wind storms are coming. I mean. It, Production's going down, not up right now. Babine is minus 30 degrees right now. And Matt, I was just looking at the spreads here. It looks like the green dug fur and dry dug fur, from what I can see, is, is back in line where it should be. It doesn't have those big, big variances right now. Yeah, and I think that you're going to see more of this. You know, it's a good exercise to do this once every few months, but go back and look at what happened to the wides last year from January 1st to, say, August 1st. Yeah, And then go look at the price of the wides right now compared to the narrows and, and, and sort of try to extrapolate what you think will happen on 2x8, 2x10, 2x12, all species from today through the first part of July. And every optimizer in North America is going to figure out how not to make that stuff. You know what I mean? So you'll see a little bit more 2x4 and 2x6 and a significant less amount of wides coming out of the, of the pipeline here for the foreseeable future. So Matt, you brought up a point when we were talking about what we want to discuss today, talking about massive housing shortage being kicked around. You throw on, you know, CNBC and other places. There's all kinds of economists and people putting out we're underbuilt and lower rates on the on the positive side of things, right? And you know, I'm always suspect of that because since I've got in the business, everybody has been telling me we're underbuilt. But what are your guys' thoughts? What What are your thoughts on being underbuilt in in rates in here? I know they they've been bouncing around. They were up again a little bit yesterday, but they're probably within a point or two of where they're going to settle out for the whole year. Don't you think? I mean, I don't see rates really moving significantly down over this over two thousand twenty four, while demand still stays pretty steady. I don't Greg, have a strong opinion on it though, Ash, because. I, I'm in a running argument with a realtor buddy of mine. He thinks we're going to have all kinds of rate cuts this year. I feel like he's just talking his position because he wants to sell more houses. I feel like there's a battle between the Fed and the White House and, and the Democrats in Congress that want to spend, 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 because that's their agenda, right? I mean, that's their political promise. They're keeping their promises. They want to reward their constituents, and they want to keep shoving money into the economy to make it look better, right? I mean, it's just politics. It's okay. I, I'm not going to fight them, but I feel like the Fed has had to take drastic action over the last year plus to combat that inflation. So I'm on the I'm on the fence here. I, is the Fed going to just start dropping rates all of a sudden? And, and if they do, what does that mean? Does that mean we're going into a recession? Does that mean we're in an already recession? Like, I mean, dropping rates isn't something that you just do just because you feel like it. It, it. There's a economic result from that, you know? Well, Janet Yellen said we've had a soft landing. And Greg, what is your inside Fed people telling you? I kind of go back to, hey, how did we get to where we are to help me figure out how we're going to get to where we're going? We got here because we flooded the, the we flooded the economy with all sorts of money, both phys fiscally and monetarily. COVID, we had back-to-back -back years of 20% money supply growth from 2020 to 2022, right? From the, say, let's say, second quarter 2020 COVID to the first quarter of 2022, the money supply grew greater than the prior 10 years combined. So we, we fast forward and you know we, I can talk all about, I've talked about this before, that 
Jerome Powell basically sold out getting renominated by perpetuating the inflation is transitory lie so that we could get the last two kind of blow out inflation increasing act, et cetera, et cetera. So now we fast forward, we take all that out. We've, we've had the, 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 big, the greatest increase in interest rates in a short period of time, going from zero to five and a half percent. Money supply growth now is negative year over year. So how long before that catches up with the economy is really what the question is. We haven't had a soft landing because we haven't had any landing at all. The, the money is still percolating itself through the system. My sense, and, and this is you know kind of to Matt's point, two things is one is CPI came out today. It was higher than higher than expected. Okay, so that that basically puts the Fed now on pause. They're not cutting rates anytime. They're not cutting rates anytime soon. In order for the Fed to cut rates significantly at all. We would have to go into a recession. We'd have to have things would have to get really, really bad, right? There's still lots of money floating through the system. The the federal government, you know, there's agencies that have hundreds of billions of dollars that they're still trying, they're still looking to dole out to their favored minions. My deal is, hey, rates aren't going to come down anytime soon. The kind of the status quo, the market is adjusting to higher mortgage rates. Home builders are buying down that rate to continue to sell homes. Yes, there is a shortage of housing in the US. Multifamily is gonna be slower. There's a record number of units that are coming online and rents in most markets are adjusting lower. Those are all positives because housing is too expensive in general. You know, my prediction for 2024 is that, you know, we could see the the average new home price and the average existing home price maybe be even, which is unheard of. The supply of existing is going to continue to be t- tight and the supply of new, they're going to continue to offer those to lower to keep that product moving. I love it. Another thing Matt brought up here. Do you think they'll I drop the rates side. three to six times there, Greg? If if that happens, we got we're in a whole lot of hurt, Matt. Yeah. It's gonna we're gonna lose a lot of money this year if that happens. So uh, trend changes okay. for 2024. Matt, great point you brought up here. Greg and uh, Matt was saying in 29 years he's been in the business. MSR didn't run back down to where two and better was in the winter. It's still carrying about a hundred dollar premium. Uh, with that said, I will say all the lists I see coming over are with Mills wanting to sell MSR right now. It's incredibly overvalued right now for the time of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but it's a good point that Matt said is that uh, I don't probably remember it adjusting that much. And maybe that could be just because of, you know, contracts that people have on, lack of of that production in the West. Yeah, I think there's just less production. Yeah, that could be. That's a good, that, astute point, Matt. What other trend changes for 2024? I mean, the spread's a lot tighter. If you look at the East, I mean, the Western spread is really, really wide, right? But the Eastern spread, I mean, it's, you know, historically, I look in the Q1 to buy MSR basically at the two and better price. And if you do that in Q1, you typically make money. That's a great basis. That's a good point. So let's look at like two by four, 1650. If you bought it out of the Great Lakes, it'd probably be somewhere around 570 Chicago as opposed to 620, 630 from the West, right? Yeah, I, I you know that was I remember we we were selling uh, MSR earlier this year. We were shipping it out of Detroit, ship, send it, ship it, send it to Phoenix. Yeah, a guy came up to me, Matt, and said, "I bought your loads of two by <laughs> four, ten foot, twenty one hundred in Detroit, and shipped it all the way to Phoenix." Oh my goodness! Think 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 about that, Matt. This is one of my favorite <laughs> favorite ones. Reflections from two thousand twenty three. Let's take a look back and what surprised us, right? And you basically said, and I agree with you on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach up up in the cab and pull the, the large air horn on here if people listen to us and please listen to this the disclaimer that we put out here all the time i mean 90 percent of the stuff we were right on and if people would have listened to us they would have either a made a shit ton of money by putting on the trades that we were putting on or b 
not lost a lot of money by not putting or getting rid of things or not putting on trades at the wrong or right time. Does that make sense? Uh, since we started this little podcast together, there's been a lot of really good information that we should probably be charging a lot of money for put out there. So I'm gonna have to talk to my agent about that. But um, but yeah, no, I think we read the tea leaves pretty well last year. I mean, I don't want to sit here and pat myself on the back all day long, but Greg's a very smart person. Ashley's a very smart person. I'd like to think that I can sort of keep up with you guys intellectually from time to time, but I think the three of us together are, work, Matt, works pretty I, well. I Maybe we'll have to that. start our own company when I retire. I'll just, we'll just all retire and start our own company. Generally, what I've found <laughs> is taking you know, a consortium of Greg's – or consortium, is that the right word? Taking Greg's ideas and thoughts and your ideas and thoughts and making them my own and then talking to customers. The, well, you gotta thing, go like Greg, this, Ash. You gotta go like this. The, the best thing hey, about I up, Greg I and I. Hold thing. on, hold on, Greg. Whoa, whoa, the, the, whoa, great, whoa. The, the greatest thing about having Greg and I talking our ideas is that I'm primarily a Western guy and he's primarily an Eastern import guy. And so that's a lot of geography covered right there. There's things he knows that I don't ever know. I don't I don't sell in Boston. You know, I don't do anything in Miami. And then there's things happening out here that you guys would not know of, right? Unless you were talking to me. So Absolutely. I find that, that information alone, the, the geographical differences between the three of us is highly beneficial to the people that listen to the show. We need to get a yellow pine guru on the show in the next few weeks so we can talk yes. about that. Because with the high percentage of uh, overall North American production now that's, that is Southern pine, that's something we, we want to get some, some insight. I know we saw a, uh, an article, uh, an announcement the other day about some permanent yellow pine closures at some, at some mills. Yes. Up until this point, all we've ever talked about is, you know, all the, all the new production that's coming on. That's right. And all the new production that was coming out of the, yeah, in the South. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point, Greg. Well, that's, let's, um, why well, one more thing, Ash, is just as a highlight you know, before in mid yeah. in mid December we put out a a LinkedIn poll so people could uh, predict what uh, the high price in Western Spruce two by four was going to be. You know, at the time the current mill the current price was four twelve. You know, what I got was seventy percent of the respondents think that the high of the year is going to be you know either five fifty to six hundred or or over 600. So, you know, you're looking, you know, that that 70% of the people think it's going to be 100 to $150 above today's price. I do want to put a kudos out to the 4% of folks that uh, you know, think it's going to be a moonshot and go back to 1000 and ask them to uh send along a little bit of whatever that they smoke. Actually, can you call them and see if they're buying? Why, why don't you just walk outside your front door and probably could just pick it off the side of the road there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I want to just start off. Uh, let's just start the year off with one of my favorite sections, Mary date or reject uh, for <laughs> items. And uh, I think I'm being more politically correct saying reject uh, there, right? Is, is that job, more woke? Mate. Yeah. Yes. You're growing Thanks. up, Ashley. Uh, uh, but this section is we talk about the items that we want to marry, the ones that we just want to date, and the ones that we want to, as Greg says, open the car door and kick out. Um, <laughs> Matt, you want to you want to start you want to start out with yours. You know, I forgot what they were, so let me go find that email. Um, I can I can yeah. give you what you start said. What you Greg. said. Why you, why, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Greg. go for it. Otherwise, I'm well, ready if you guys want to do it too. I, you know, I mean, I so I'm going to say. I'm I'm dating two by four sixteens. They're still a little bit relatively up, overvalued, but there's still great great liquidity in that item and and good demand. I, I, I'm waiting to see if it's somewhere along the line the the Europeans uh, crush that price, but they they haven't done it. They haven't done it yet. Mary, I got nothing. I got nothing that I'm on. I don't want to get that tied down right this minute. I want to be, I want to play the field a little bit. I guess what the, the, the you know, what do I, what do I, what do I hate? What do I really hate right now? Hmm. Hmm. Bug hmm. kill? Well, we could. <laughs> yeah. Well, can we talk about worms? Can we talk about worms? We'll do that after, we'll do that after this. Um, 
Yeah, no, it, yeah, you know, so the most undervalued thing that I see out there is European two by six, 92 and five eights. They're, they're dirt cheap. I mean, I know we've reduced our volumes that are going to be coming in. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's something, Hey, if you want to, you know, the undervalued item, that's, that's what I, one of the things well, the that great I see thing is, is really undervalued, I guess the other undervalued, but it's, it's less undervalued than it was, was two by four, 10 footers. Yeah. And hey, just I'll I'll jump into mine, but I wanted to say just say one thing. When we talked three weeks ago, four weeks ago, Matt, you even said this. Well, let's let everybody else sell their two by six, one sixteen, and five ace down in Texas and give them away while we'll sit on ours and hold did them. It. And did we it. did that, and now they're up like a hundred dollars a thousand. Did you did you sell them at the bottom? No, no, no we held yeah, them. Yeah, smart. It, it it made no sense, and I think you were saying you did the same thing on some of yours. I dump some because I have to. I mean, there, there's always you got to keep your inventory moving. Period. Doesn't matter yep. you know, what item it is, but you don't have to dump all your inventory at the bottom. And so I, I put a halt to it. You know, after after I said that, I did that. Well, we did. We sold some too, no doubt. I mean, yeah. just like the lion share that we kept. So my uh, my Mary, I like the southern the southerners. So I'm going to marry two by ten, number one and number two, fourteens and sixteens. And I especially like those out of the central, especially after some of the curtailments this week. If I look at number one, two by four, fourteens in the low to mid three thirties and number two, fourteens at in the low, almost, I mean, I bought some for a smart guy. I'll just say his name is begins with a C and ends with a, with an S bought him delivered up into the Midwest at around 400 low 400s delivered on two by 10 fourteens. Right. I mean, that was number two and two by two, number two sixteens are, you know, like 300 ish mil. So I think those are a good one to marry outright because they're just a good absolute value. And, uh, they'll, they'll cook for you clean everything over the next, over the next few months. Um, uh, now dating the dating. I, I really, Greg, I like two by four sixteens in Euro. I, I'm a little strange here. I like them because they're volatile. And they're good looking. My friends seem to like them. I'm thinking about bringing them home. I don't know if I'll bring them home to my parents anymore, but everybody seems to like them. The two by four sixteens, you know, and one day they don't one day they do. And that's, I like to date something like that. Uh, re <laughs> reject. I think I'm going to reject MSR for right now. And uh, I'm going to continue to reject it. We were married to MSR for a long time last year. We, we, we enjoyed the time together, but, um, they just want too much from us now. And I, I don't, I don't think that there's uh, any economic value to that relationship at this point. So I'm sorry, MSR, uh, there's no place in my house for you. Um, so that was, that was kind of mine. <laughs> I don't remember what I sent you. Um, so Matt, you were saying you have uh, Mary standard and better dry or green any species nearly yeah. the same nearly the same as number three as your mary yeah and these are two by four, twelve. Just, and, two by four twelve foot two or number two or number three standard and better dry or green any species nearly the same as number three uh yeah oh. yeah yeah Matt, you're right greg date two by four twelves two and better number three any species undervalued redheaded stepchild yeah. Uh, in divorce, two by six long lengths relative to random lengths value. In reality, I'm not I'm down. Seeing, on... I found the email. Okay. All right. You guys ready yeah. to go? Is it time? Yeah. Is it time for me to step in here? There you go. Step up. All right. So, uh, the gal that I really want to marry, even though I'm already married, maybe I'll just pull on. You know, just pull a. Who's that guy that just kept marrying people and never told them all? They did a movie about him on like Lifetime Channel. The gal I want to marry is standard, better, dry, or green, any species. And this is more of a Western thing. So standard better is sort of an old grade and old people like me know a little bit about standard better, but it's, you know, it's a, it used to be two and better. So before say around 2005 to 2010 timeframe, standard better was the main Western grade or some spruce mills and basically all the Western lumber mills made standard better green two before it's only two before. Yeah. And they made a uh, standard better, uh, dry two before and it traded like for five bucks less than two and better right so that for most of my career there was a spread of about five maybe ten dollars would be the spread between two before 
standard better and two and better. And in the last seven or eight years, the spread between standard better and two and better has gone to like 40, 50, 60. It's kind of like the new number three. It just, it just, there's so few people with standard better SKUs in their computer systems anymore. And these, the, the turnover of the industry with the old guys retiring, people don't want to buy standard better anymore. They've, they've forgotten that you can use standard better. And so yeah. Old guys like me that know a little bit about standing better love this situation. It's great for what trading. You, you just I want, buy it at the you buy it at a number three price, man. I, I do whatever I want with it, man. It's it's my new wife. You know, I mean, she is ready to go. She's she's young. She's hot. She's got lots of energy. You know, I just I just we go on trips together. We do everything. We're going to Reno next weekend, so I like that one. Um, the one the one that I want to date. I mean, she's pretty hot too, but I'm not ready to introduce her to the to the folks like Ashley was talking about. But I do like two before twelve foot number two or number three, any species, green or dry. It's just become an, a completely undervalued length here in the last three or four months, and I think that'll change itself over the next three or four months. But uh, but I like that. I like twelve footers. I think that's probably something I'm paying attention to. And then the thing I don't like. And it's not so much that I don't like it because it's a mom- it's a momentum trade right now. Like if you actually own some of these, you can sell them. But I don't like the disconnection between the high value of two to six long lengths, green or dry, compared to two to six number two random. And so something's got to give. Either two to six long lengths are going to get more production and they'll come down in price over the next three months, or two to six number two random is going to have to start coming up some more might be a combination of both but if i owned a bunch of two to six long links i wouldn't want to just hold on to them you know put it that way i would i'd be i'd be paying attention to other people's opinions about the value of them so there you go gotcha well look at we've got it at uh I, I just want one more thing i wanted to go over before we close this thing out so over the last few days i've talked to a few people and um at different trading houses etc that are younger guys that are leaving and going to different jobs. I think we're going through that part of the industry right now. Think about it. If you joined in 2018 or 19 and went through three years of just great markets, this type of market is a little harder to make money on. So my, my advice to all these younger kids that have entered the market and are going through this right now, I missed the last three years and have been in this last one. And this is still a pretty good market. You can make a decent living in. So my thought is to hang in there and, uh, and, keep working hard. And as Matt said, Matt's got Matt has 29 years experience under your belt. And Greg and I got a a bunch under our belt. It's you go through years like this sometimes. And, and honestly, we won't tell you, we've gone through years a lot that have been horrible and you just deal with it. Right. So don't look at one year or one time frame as the be all end all and how it's going to be. You got it. This is, this is when you really build customers. And and this is how Greg's always said it. You know, you can call somebody for three or four years and it's that one time you want to give up that they, they call you back to buy something. So I'm just saying is if you're young in this industry, listening, hang in there, things are, it's a great industry and use this as an opportunity to, to sharpen up your tools. All right, guys. Hey, listen, great to, great to be back. We'll uh, look forward to getting regular shows up. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Greg. We appreciate yeah. y'all. Hey, Greg, listening. I hope you feel better, dude. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 a lot better. I just like it, it's this thing's this thing's been a bugaboo, but you know, we're we're on the mend. All right, guys. All right. See good ya. to see you guys. Later. Yep, good to see you too. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Lumber Word. The Lumber Word podcast is dedicated to engaging conversations about the lumber industry, including trading ideas, market trends and evaluations of overvalued and undervalued assets. We wish to emphasize that the discussions and opinions expressed in this podcast are purely for informational and entertainment purposes. They should not be considered as financial or investment advice. We encourage our listeners to make their own financial decisions, taking into account their unique circumstances and financial goals, and to seek professional financial advice if necessary.